Greetings from the Catholic Parish of Bundaberg, trusting you are safe and in good spirits. Today we continue our getting to know the people of our parish just a little bit better, a bit of fun and information. And today we have Anne Dallison, and it's really great to have you, Anne. Thank you, Father. Now, I'm told that you have 10 children. I do. And 20 lots of grandchildren. <laughs> Yes. And growing grandchildren, great grandchildren. Great grandchildren. Yeah. You also say you've given your life to Jesus, basically through your family, I would suggest. Yes. Yeah. And you have a little thing that says, My life is my faith. Yes. So I'm going to put it onto the people watching this. You will feel that story coming through as Anne speaks. So, Anne, you have chosen just a very short little uh, text from Matthew's Gospel. It's quite yes. profound. It speaks to you of your own faith stories. So could you like to read to that read that for us now, please? Yes. Matthew thirteen verses forty four and forty five. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The man who finds it there is it again, and so happy is he that he goes and sells everything he has so that he may buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a trader who is looking for fine pearls. Once he has found a pearl of exceptional quality, he goes away, sells everything he has, and buys it. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that kingdom of heaven, it's like a revelation of love, isn't it? Like yes. you, you experience it. Can you tell us the reason why you have chosen that particular gospel? Uh, because I found that pearl of great price when I came into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And as far as I'm concerned, that was the greatest day of my life above all others. And I have, since then, I have considered myself very rich in things that count. <laughs> that experience clearly comes through your life. And we experience that when we are with you. So just, I can hear that beautiful Scottish accent there. So can you give us just a little praise of your life story from back in Glasgow? Yes, well, I was born in Glasgow. Uh, and we left there when I was six months old and moved to a suburb uh, which was about eight miles from the centre of Glasgow. I went to school at St. Bridget's School uh, and went to church at St. Bridget's Church there, yes. So where do you get your deep faith from? Well, it was passed down from my parents and my grandparents. And as they knew it at the time. Uh, and that is what I have lived. I did live in that first, well, till I was an adult then. I followed their example. They were good role models. And yes, that's where it came from. So you are a member of our St. Patrick's Church community. And when we see you at Mass or in any gathering, we always have Arthur with us, your husband yes. as well. But he's not too well at the moment. We would love to have, to have had him with, yes. with you because we just see the two of you together as the yes. one. It's quite yes. beautiful. Can you just tell us, like you met Arthur in Scotland 
Yes. Can you just uh, tell us that beautiful romantic story you were telling me? <laughs> uh, my mother and father had a grocery business and because it was their own business, it meant they were work, work, work. And then they had this holiday cabin on a hill outside Glasgow, which they went to when they could get the opportunity. And it was at Easter 1956. And I had gone there on the bus with a girlfriend. And it so happened that that day, Arthur and his best friend had cycled many miles to stay over at his friend's family cabin. And they had forgotten to take the key with them. So they were sitting there on the hill wondering what do we do now when my friend and I came past and they started chatting us up. <laughs> it's the only way we can do it. <laughs> and so we, we walked around talking and sharing who we were with each other. And that's how it all began. And it developed from there because yes. Arthur joined the Merchant Yes, Navy. well, he had at that time plans to go into the Navy in at the end of that year. And that meant for the next couple of years, we didn't see very much of each other at all uh, until we married. <laughs> uh, Remember the date that you were married? Oh, yes. Yeah. The 15th of December, 1958. 58. Yes. And so Arthur's travels took him to Australia in the Navy. He was in the Merchant Navy, right? And he was coming back and forth to Australia to pick up sugar to take to Japan or other countries and he would come home and say oh it's so great there you know and then once we had babies it always seemed that when he did come home it was winter and I had cardigans and shawls around them keeping them warm and he would say the kids in Australia run about in their bare feet. <laughs> it took me, him, a long time to encourage me to leave my family in Scotland and come to Australia to live. Well, this is May and I can assure you the temperature over in Glasgow at the moment is six degrees. Yes. Yes. So you wouldn't be running around. <laughs> So it's a bit warmer here. Thank you. Thank you for that. So when you came, now, what, did you come under the 10 pound yes, POM policy? Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> and you arrived where? At Wakehall Hostel, Immigration Hostel in Brisbane. And there were some rules that you had to stay in Australia? Yes, we had to stay in Australia because we had come under that scheme. We had to stay here for two years so that the country could get the benefit of Arthur's trade. Or if we couldn't like, you know, didn't like it here and decided to go back before that two years was up, then we had to pay our own fare home, which we couldn't afford. <laughs> Yeah. And so, I mean, we intended to stay there for the two years. Well, it's been more than two years, and you found this place called Bundaberg. Yes. Can you tell us how that all happened? Well, Arthur was sick one day and had the opportunity to buy a newspaper, the Courier Mail from a boy who was going through the centre and there was a job at the Bundaberg foundry 
and I was really attracted to the name Van der Berg. It was like a magnet. I mean, we didn't know any places in Australia, just wake up. So I was really attracted to the name. Well, you must have been enjoying Bundaberg because it was just over three years later that your parents and your brothers also came to Australia. Yes, Nine and years. my sister Noreen. And Noreen, of course, who we know just so well. <coughs> yeah. So can you tell us that little story of why they came? You must have been very convincing. <laughs> they owned the, the grocery business in Scotland and then the council decided to widen the road in front of where their business was and of course they lost all their business. People couldn't get to the shop. And then of course that was a real problem for them. As my father by then was in his fifties, I think. <coughs> uh, and in the end, probably after a lot of prayer, <laughs> my mum suggested that they make the decision to come to Australia to Arthur and Anne. And they finished up doing that. And staying here? Yes. Yeah, so there must have been something about it. <laughs> yes. 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 So you, you tell me that you like to be a person in the background a lot, not up front. But I noticed that you are involved in a number of the things that happen here in our parish of Bundaberg. Um, you talk, talk to me about the life and the spirit uh, prayer. Yes. You tell, you tell me the... Um, your sister Noreen started the Blanket Buddies. Yes. Can you just tell us some of those stories? Because they've been obviously major parts in your life. Yes. Uh, well, which one first? Well, do the Blanket Buddies first because yes. that brings in your sister Noreen, yes. who we just love, yes. who passed yes. away just not so long ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, we were in Arnhem Land at the time that she started Blanket Buddies, around that time. And she had started out by crocheting lots and lots of blankets on her own at home and giving them to the church to raffle for the missions. And then it reached the point where she and a friend decided to start uh, opening it up to others and it just grew and grew and I have to say that even some of the husbands have, had said to her what a difference it had made for their wives to come to blanket buddies each week to have that to look forward to and to have the crochet to keep them going at home and the friendships and it, it had made a real difference to their wives. Yes, so blanket buddies is now ecumenical too, isn't it? So they Oh yes. 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 And blankets go all over the place. All over the place. Including my brother in Melbourne, who is, <laughs> which is a bit cold down there. So he, yes, and I've also got one here too yes, as well. She was always there. The bishop's got one. <laughs> she yeah. was always very loyal. <laughs> yes. And so you've been heavily involved in blanket buddies. Uh I've been there and crocheted but there's people who have wonderful gifts of crochet. I only actually learned to crochet yeah. by going and joining Noreen. So, so if people want to be part of that, they can still be part of Blanket Buddies. Oh yes, just ring the parish. Yes, that'll, that'll be great. Now, the one which I find an extraordinary part of your life is the Holy Spirit involvement in your life. Yes. It just comes through you so strongly. Can you just tell us what that has meant for you? Everything. Everything. 
Uh, <clears throat> at one time in my life, when we were going through a trial with one of our children, uh, I was given a book, in fact it was Laurie who gave it to me, that, told, that taught me about praising the Lord in all circumstances, praise and thanksgiving in all circumstances, not for. And I was really attracted to that new way of praying. So I started putting it into practice. And then when we came back to Bundaberg, I discovered that there was a group here at, now this is many years ago, at St. Patrick's on a Thursday evening with people who prayed that way, prayer and praise group. And I was delighted that I could join that and be with people who were praying the same as me. Then the opportunity came for a Life in the Spirit seminar and I did that and that was when I gave my life and everything in it to Jesus and that was when the Holy Spirit was released in me, full of joy and peace and oh, just from then on. My faith grew and grew and grew. Yeah. Would you like to tell us one of your Holy Spirit type stories? Ooh. Holy Spirit type stories. Look, I just depend on him so much. Uh, <clears throat> everything, I go to Jesus. And his Holy Spirit and Abba Father <laughs> uh, every day just placing the day and living a day this is I'm learning to live one day at a time with their help yeah. see it like at the time we are in now with this virus yes the first it, thing I yeah. did was claim the protection of the precious shed blood of Jesus over that <laughs> and their families. And then I relax. Mm. So and you, then yeah. sketching the virus. Yeah. So these trials that come our way, including that one, which is a very serious one globally, mm. you trust in the Holy Spirit to see us through all of that. Yes. So those yes. persons out here who are a little scared and worried about things, you would say... Yes, I haven't worried at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it works for me because I can also accept that if in fact one of us got it, then that's God's... See, in God's plan, nothing happens by chance in his plan for yeah. us yeah. and so i pray that prayer of protection and then if it should happen i accept his will he has allowed it to happen yeah so and holy spirit is just obviously clearly such a major part of your life and even yes. in our difficult times that we just mentioned like you can't go to the church for mass at the moment, but we have streaming, online streaming, and you can find the Holy Spirit in that. Yes. Would you like to explain that one? Well, the fact that we can have mass from our own parish there at home, it's just wonderful. I just give the Holy Spirit every credit for how that came to be and of course I see other things on that uh, the student the teachings from Ar Archbishop Fulton Sheen <laughs> and just 
we just love it, you know, and we have a daughter. He doesn't herself attend church at the moment, but she's right on to saying, Mum, Mass is on at such and such a time on Sunday on, on the, you yeah. know, on the YouTube. And yeah, it's so, a really good forum that we're just really waking up to in a lot of ways. Yes, yes. yes. And you also mentioned how the Holy Spirit works in unusual ways in a sense, because today's reading, um, you're reading oh, Acts yes. of the Apostles, yes. And right there it was. You've been worried about this particular interview right through the week yes. and all the different things that have happened, including your car wouldn't start this morning. Exactly, and it didn't surprise me in the least. <laughs> it didn't worry you either, did it? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why it didn't worry you, you found that very reading. We'd just like to just read a little bit of what you found this morning. This is today's reading. You can also look for opportunities in your everyday life to plant the seeds of the gospel. Don't think you have to do everything yourself. Just do your part and leave the rest to God and to anyone the Lord might send to them. When the situation arises, ask the Holy Spirit for the courage and humility to share your faith. In the course of a conversation, you might be able to talk about a time when you felt God's care or when you felt him blessing you in some way. Or you could share a favorite Bible verse. You don't have to have perfect words or try to convert anyone. That's the Holy Spirit's job but you can still be open and honest about your faith. For the past 2,000 years, God has been calling his people to go out and share the good news. May we commit ourselves to helping it spread and go. Holy Spirit, show us how we can share God's love with the world. Beautiful, beautiful. So we'll finish with one of my favourite prayers and then I'm going to ask you to say another little prayer. Oh. So if you can join with me with this one. Come Holy Spirit, fill, fill the hearts, hearts of the faithful, the faithful and, and kindle in them, in them the, the fire, fire of your love. love. Send, Send forth, forth your spirit, spirit and they and shall, shall be created and you, you shall renew the face of the, of the earth. earth. Amen. Thanks Anne, if you'd like to pray that little prayer for our time. Compassionate and loving Father, in the face of confusion and concern, impart to us the calm of your presence. In you, allow us to find hope and healing. Be with those who serve the sick and give them your caring hands. Be with those who lead and give them your spirit of wisdom. Be with those who have fallen ill and give them your comforting heart. Wrap your arms around our world and hold us in your love. Allow us at this time of trial to then serve as instruments of that love to all we meet. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Anne. Thank you, and if you're asking everyone just to keep in your prayers, Anne and Arthur, we'd have loved to have had Arthur with us, so please let Arthur know that we were thinking and praying for him. Thank you. And for your beautiful family, and many, many, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> so may that Lord that we've experienced today, may that Lord be with you all. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you, Anne, and thank you for being with us today. Join us again next week in another episode of Church Chat. Keep in touch, stay well, and be gentle.